But let's cross back to him. He's standing by for us in Santon. Arabile, what's the latest there? Yeah, thank you, Nombu Mulele. Well, it is now turning into afternoon, and I can tell you now it's been an absolutely busy morning. We've cranked things up, and the vibe here is certainly one of expectation, shall we say. A lot of deals being announced a little bit earlier on, about 7.71 billion odd from uh, the likes of Anglo-American as well. A few other companies getting involved, even Nasbert putting it together around 1 billion rand also. So we are getting some momentum building. But who better to speak to about not just economic growth, but really how we create an investment environment for South Africa than the former finance minister, Trevor Manuel. Mr. Manuel, thank you so much for your time as well this afternoon. Thanks, Arabina. Shall we unpack whether we have created the right and conducive uh, environment for South Africa to develop what is now an investment-led economy? Well, I think that uh, the first point to make about it is that today is not the end point. Yep. It's... Uh, I think it's a very important milestone because my sense of uh, today, uh, and it'll continue tomorrow, is that uh, there'll be the kinds of announcements that lift the spirit and show what is possible. The numbers are very, very impressive. Um, tomorrow will be a different engagement. It will be bilaterals with ministers primarily. And uh, the next wave of investment will be sitting there when people better understand what the policy uh, or the direction of policy travel is. So uh, I think that uh, the, the, the entire idea of the conference is, is, is very, very positive. I think that, that if one just pauses and, and reflects on the President's message this morning, you begin to understand what this is about. The first issue is to acknowledge the depth of problems that we've had over the last decade. The second issue is to demonstrate that the institutions are being rebuilt and that no stone will be left unturned to resolve the challenges that are presented, especially in relation to state capture, the collapse of the revenue service. And I think that those are very positive messages because, um, you know, investors can slip out from here, go to their hotel room and see the Nugent Commission in action Indeed. and know that what the president's saying has a lot of a lot of truth in it and I think it's that that's important now part of what we need to do is to signal that there's change and it's government signaling, signaling that there's change as president today on Wednesday I think that minister when his medium term budget policy statement was tough talk but necessarily tough talk it didn't help this situation though did it no 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 uh, I, I'm, I'm not too sure about that you see I, I, I read in, in one newspaper, oh, that his candle wasn't good. Yeah. I think candle works. With, with ministers of finance, candor is very important. People need to feel that they're being addressed in honest fashion. Yes. When he was in Parliament uh, yesterday and addressing a number of uh, portfolio committees, he seems to have unpacked Wednesday's messages. And, you know, debt, debt in this economy, uh, uh, public debt is a huge, huge problem. And he's saying we need to cap the debt levels, we need to look at debt service costs, we need to understand that if we allow that train to carry on on the same tracks, that will undermine other things we do because part of uh, the medium-term budget policy statement in the documentation available by about 2021, uh, debt service costs will be higher than what we spend on education. Now, I, I, I've reflected before that I had a similar conversation with Madiba in 96, and about the same issue, and he said, you can't spend more on the past than the future. Education is our future. And, and that message is a fundamentally important one, which is why in the way in which Tito Mboweni went in and explained it uh, in Parliament, uh, both Wednesday and yesterday, I think uh, sends very positive vibes. So I'm, I, I think it's helpful because people need to know that they trust it in the same way that when the Zondo Commission starts unpacking matters, there are going to be stories that will hurt our ears. And people are going to say, was it really that bad? And they need to understand that it was so that we never go back there again. 
So the next period is going to be difficult. It's about building trust, and I think honesty is going, is going to be a very, very key ingredient of building that trust. And the messages that we're getting from government now are the honest, down-to-earth, honest messages without sure. flowers. They just are what they are. I've always said that it's always darkest before dawn. Would you say that this is perhaps a dark phase for us to be able to get to that new dawn? But also for the president uh, and ministers to be able to call this out mm. for what it is, I think helps people understand that, yes. Yeah. A lot of money needs to be raised. But as you said, we've got debt needs, and we probably have more an expenditure problem than we do a revenue problem, if one was to look at how the money is spent. Would you say that we're perhaps in a space now where we could fix that problem, perhaps in the next few few years? Well, I don't think that these are either or problems. Um, I was I was shocked sitting in Parliament and listening to um, Minister Mwenyi talk about the revenue, uh, the the that refund sitting in SARS. Now, they don't belong to SARS. And SARS can't yes. inflate its numbers by 20 odd billion by not paying people who are due that money. Indeed. Because that impacts on the cash flow of businesses. And you, you impact on cash flow, you shut businesses down. So that's not a, it's not the, 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 the most pleasant song I'd like to hear, but I'm glad that it's captured his attention. Yes. He will deal with the issue. But rebuilding, rebuilding the revenue service in its capability because we had perhaps the strongest revenue service in the world. It was capable of getting into nooks and crannies. It's been destroyed. It has to be rebuilt. That's fundamentally important. Expenditure needs to be curbed. And in curbing expenditure, I think the, the uh, stimulus package announced by the president a few weeks ago needs to be financed, and it needs to be financed from within. In respect of um, uh, the investments, uh, we, need, we need this investment for job creation. Um, the big question that, that uh, investors have been asking is about macroeconomic certainty and the exchange rate of the RAND. They don't want their big investments to be, to be depreciated very rapidly. And so they're watching what South Africans are doing. The announcements in the first session were primarily South African-based companies. Indeed. And that, I think, is the exciting part because it's that that says to non-South African prospective investors, if they are moving, we want to be in on the act as well. And I think that um, that's largely going to be the big, the big confidence lift that we need out of today's discussion. Sure. Your final thoughts then on what you expect to come out of this or what you'd like to be the end goal, the end result, at the end of particularly today and even tomorrow, what you hope would be the, the result? You know, the president uh, on the 16th of February with his first State of the Nation address uh, was very upbeat about this issue. He wanted to call this conference in three months. You go back to the Sonet with three months, it's taken a bit longer, but I think there's a lot of traction for the ideas. If at the end of today, he says, I have four investment envoys, I'm appointing more. We need to get out there, we need to be talking to people, because part of what we're doing is, I mean, you know, we've been to the US, next week we'll go to New York again. But New York is a financial capital. If you really want to move money out of the U.S., you need to get into the Midwest. You need to get to cities like Chicago, Detroit. Yes. You need to get Industrial. into 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 uh, various parts of Texas, Austin, and, and Dallas. You you need to get uh, to the West Coast and talk to uh, the kinds of investors that are sitting there. And it can't just be a visit to New York. Similarly, when we visited Beijing recently. Uh, it was Beijing. China is a very large country, Indeed. and one of the the, the the companies that wants to make a big announcement came to Beijing, but they're not Beijing-based. So we have to continue to work at this, and I think it's unlocking that and rebuilding the relationship. My own observations are that where we have successful investment from countries, uh, last week in Germany, the three auto companies. Uh, uh, BMW, Mercedes, and, and, and Volkswagen were in the room. 
and they did the ambassadorial work with other investors. And that, I think, is the, is the kind of flywheel activity that we need. Um, and the more of that we have, the easier life is going to be uh, on this mission to attract back investment and to demonstrate that policy certainty and predictability is the key to sure. successful engagement. And that is necessary to create the numbers of, of jobs that South Africa needs. Mr. Manuel, appreciate your time Thanks this everyone. afternoon. Uh, it is Trevor Manuel there, the former finance minister, and of course even the head of the National Planning Commission at some point, detailing just how South Africa can itself move forward, how we can embark on a journey not just to go to the international hubs, but go beyond that to garner this investment, because there is a whole lot more out there. Nongo we will continue to unpack the day's proceedings here at the Investment Conference 2018, and we'll check in with you a little bit later. Thanks very much, Arabile, for that.